Welcome to this week's piece. These guys are found all the time. They're nothing crazy special, but for some reason, I just still think they're really cool. So my stepdad picked this one up for me. It was missing one of the little latches, but it was inside, so that's fine. We gotta reattach. At one point, it looks like somebody tried putting something on top of it that was too heavy, so it damaged the top a little. It's still structurally sound, but I mean, they're not meant for stacking things. Um, it has this awesome tray still inside, and the interior is still in pretty good condition, with the exception of, like I said, that top section that they kind of messed up. There were two shipping labels on this, which I thought were super fun, but of course they have to come off, so I'm just using quite a bit of water to get them all saturated, and they scrape off really easily, and then I'm reattaching the hardware. This one was a little bit bent, of course, because it was taken off, so I'm just bending it back into shape. I'm using my tight bond hide glue to reattach it, and then I've got some little screws that I'm using to attach as well. This was very easy to do. And then as you can see, I have some little pieces of tape on there. That's just holding down pieces that had started lifting. So I re-glued those. And then I'm gonna use some WD-40 just to make sure all the latches are functioning properly and smooth. This whole piece will get a really good clean just to make sure that we can make the paint adhere properly. Now, like I said, the top had a bit of damage, so I'm going to be using my Durham's putty to fill those holes. It dries really, really hard. That's why I like this stuff, and it is just activated with water. You can make it as thin or as thick as you like, and I love this stuff so much. So I'm filling up those holes. I'm making them slightly higher than the surface, and that will give me some room to kind of sand down. Now this has already been cleaned, but as I'm working outside, I noticed there's quite a bit of dust on it. So I'm just going to take a damp cloth and make sure all the dust is off because I want to go in with my gold spray paint and just kind of hit these little hardware sections. Now I'm not worried about taping anything off or making sure nothing else gets sprayed because it doesn't matter. We're gonna paint over the actual trunk portion so all I care about is just kind of covering up the really heavily scratched portions of it. I don't mind the color that it is. I just don't want it to look so scratched up. This is going to be an aged looking finish, but I don't want it to be that aged. So that's why I'm just hitting these very lightly, not being careful in any way, shape, or form. I'm just going on and touching them up. Once the gold paint has dried, I just go in and sand off the Durham's putty, get that flush with the piece. And of course, this is going to create more dust on it, which I will then have to wipe off again. As I said, I'm just attaching this with some of the tight bond wood glue and these little screws that I found in my shop. They didn't have the original screws, so these ones are slightly different, but still the same size and they look pretty decent considering the other ones have the flat tops and these ones are actual screws. So I just kind of did what I could with what I had, as you guys know, <laughs> it's kind of how I roll. But I just used a little clamp there to hold it down while I was screwing it in. And then this entire piece is going to get a coat of mellow white. This is my all-time favorite white. It's not too bright, not too creamy. It's just my favorite. And then I'm not too worried about going over the hardware because I want it to be a little bit on the hardware, but then I can go through and wipe off the excess that I don't want on there. I'm just kind of 
throwing on the paint, and then I can go through and wipe off what I don't want. To clean up the hardware, I just take a little cloth and I spray it pretty heavily with water. I don't want it dripping, but I want it pretty wet. And then before the paint thoroughly dries, this is really easy to get off. And you kind of scrub a little bit and get it reactivated and then it'll wipe right off. Again, I don't want it all off. I want it to look like it's been on there and it's aged and all that stuff. So I don't want it perfect, but I do want that brighter gold to come through. And since I'm adding legs to this and the material is so thin, I'm just taking this paint stir stick because it's also a very thin wood and I'm going to cut it up into little pieces, paint it white, and then I will use that to screw the screws into the bottom so that they have something to really bite into. Now, some areas of this were thick enough and I didn't need these, but I just wanted to make sure that I had no poking screws coming through the bottom and I also wanted them to look decent enough to be inside the bottom. So again, I'm just cutting these into these little widths and I measured these against the legs so that I knew how long I needed them. And thank you, Deborah, for those drills. I finally got to show them on camera. I'm very excited. Um, so yeah, it had the perfect size bit for me to use here for these little legs to go on. And so I did pilot holes and then I'm just taking my screwdriver and screwing in the screws into that and then I'm pressing the piece of wood on the inside into the screw in to make sure it goes into the piece of wood and as you can see it's stuck on there now and none of the screw points will be touching anything on the inside. I hope that makes sense. It was kind of hard to explain and show you both sides on camera. Now it's time for the second coat of white paint and this will be the last. There might be a couple touch-ups just because this was a black piece, but for the most part, two coats covered everything. And then it's all the same process. You go over the entire piece with the white or whatever color you're using and then take the damp cloth and wipe it back. So this is the paper that inspired this trunk. And I'm just putting it in a border around the edge. So this was fairly simple to do. The only issue is all the pieces of hardware are kind of rounded and edged. So it's not a smooth straight cut around the corners, but it is a really easy cut going along the top and bottom. And you do want to make sure it's kind of up underneath the lip so that there's no chance of this paper lifting later. This is just a peel and stick paper, but I'm fine with using it on this because it won't be handled in this area so much and it's in, in a recessed area. So it shouldn't have any issues staying there without lifting.
the last step is to seal. Um, in this case, I'm just using the lavender wax from Chalk Mountain. It is just delightful smelling. I know some of you do not love this smell, but I adore it. Oh, hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got our finished piece. So this is just the definition of simplicity. I've done one of these before, just slightly different for my mom. We were in her room and I just swapped this one out for hers so I could do photos. And then I'll put hers back because hers is, um, matches her room. So this is, I don't know, I would say it's like cottagey, a little boho, a little bit of all the things. Um, these do really well. I, it's surprising I haven't done another one since I've done my mom's because I had so many people want that. And I think it's hilarious that it's the easiest. It's literally white with wallpaper and either way it works. This one, I just did the trim around the edges because the paper that I got wasn't wide enough. It was whole oh, like an eighth of an inch off to be able to do the top, which is how I did the previous one. So I was like, you know what? We do what we can is what we have. So I just did this border, just the top edges. I like these because they're kind of inset. So there's not a huge chance for lifting and you guys know that I don't want any of my stuff to ever lift. So I like to keep them in more recessed areas if I can. Um, especially when I don't get to use poly to kind of extra seal them in. But so, I mean, this worked out great. I think it looks super, super cute. I love that it's like that. This guy was just a little bit too short for my liking, so that's why I opted to add the legs. Um, it would have looked cute with even bun feet, I think. I think it would have been fine, but these were cool. They were already white and I didn't have to do anything to them. They're just like the the legs that I did on the, <laughs> the extra little dresser that I did, the little end table, nightstand, chest of drawer type situations. Those ones are a little bit higher and obviously gold, so. Um, but these were, yeah, already, they came white, they fit on there perfectly. I was a little concerned about going through this stuff, so I put the little wood blocks in, but I, I didn't actually need them on, on every screw, so that was interesting. Um, but yeah, turned out cute. I like it. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you find something like this. I mean, it's easy, just so easy. I love these so much, and they, they go really well, so... Hope you guys are having an amazing week. Thank you so, so much to all of you guys who subscribe to the channel and leave all your comments and everything. You guys are just incredible. I hope you know that I just adore you all the time. I'm so thankful for you. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next video.